It's now time for Trivia Tracks with yours truly, Price Robertson. This edition of Trivia Tracks is brought to you by ProMed Ambulance Services, care you can count on, and Beth Smith at Edward Jones. Edward Jones, making sense of investing, member SIPC. October 4th, 1975 was a day that forever changed professional wrestling. Ric Flair, Johnny Valentine, Bob Bruggers, Tim Woods, and David Crockett were squeezed into a tiny twin-engine Cessna 310 plane from Charlotte, bound for Wilmington, North Carolina, for an evening show at the sold-out Outdoor Legion Stadium. This was at a time when faces and heels seldom traveled together, as Woods was the only face aboard the plane. Valentine, then Jim Crockett Promotions' top star and their heavyweight champion, was seated next to the pilot, 28-year-old Mike Farkas, a Vietnam veteran. The following week, he was scheduled to face then NWA World Heavyweight Champion Dory Funk Jr. at the Greensboro Coliseum. He turned to the others in the rear of the aircraft and smiled. Guess what, he said. We are out of fuel. Then he laughed. He laughed because he knew the aircraft could fly on the right engine, which was still running. At this point, the aircraft had descended to 1,000 feet above ground level on approach to land and was cleared for a visual approach. Farkas reached for the fuel tank selection lever. He turned it to the reverse fuel tank, but it was empty too. Farkas had trouble getting the plane off the ground in Charlotte because of the combined bulk of the wrestlers. He didn't distribute the weight of the passengers in the plane properly and decided to dump fuel from the gas tank to lighten the load. As Farkas turned the lever, the right engine spluttered, surged, then nothing. Only the wind rushing by and the propellers turning in the cold wind. Farkas started screaming. Valentine reached over and slapped him to bring him to. The aircraft dipped nose first in a rapid descent, only three miles short of the runway at New Hanover Airport. Farkas used the controls to level the fast-sinking plane at 4,000 feet, and then it clipped and tore through tree branches. On impact, all the seats broke loose. Johnny Valentine took the full brunt of the seats, the wrestlers and the baggage, as they slammed forward into him, breaking his back in three places. David Crockett's head smashed through the seat in front of him, busting Tim Wood's rims. His mouth ripped open and his right shoulder dislocated. Ric Flair, just 26 at the time, suffered multiple lacerations and broke his back. Bob Bruggers, the former linebacker for the Miami Dolphins and San Diego Chargers, also broke his back. The plane hit another tree, bounced off, and nosedived into a railroad embankment. All six men were rushed to the hospital. Farkas being the only fatality. Bruggers had a steel rod inserted into his spine column. After a month in the hospital, he went home. It was said he could have made a comeback in wrestling, but he never did. Valentine was forced to retire from wrestling for good following the crash. Flair, however, continued with his career, as did Tim Woods, also known by his mass persona, Mr. Wrestling, and David Crockett, who later worked as a color commentator. Early 1975, another plane crash occurred, this one in the Tampa Bay area killing Bobby Shane and injuring Austin Idol, then going by his real name, Mike McCord, Gary Hart, and Buddy Colt, who was piloting the plane. Till next time, I'm Price Robertson. Amazed by today's trivia? Then join me for Trivia Tracks weekdays at 645 on Everybody's Country, Y95.